Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I've got a review for you of a fantastic novel of isolation, The Ritual by Adam Neville. So Adam Neville is a horror author who is right at the top of my list of horror authors I need to read more stuff by at the moment. I've only read two books by him um, and that's shocking because he's been writing for years and he's fantastic and I don't know how I've managed to miss him. Um, he's someone I've kind of been aware of but never actually picked up a book uh, by until recently. So I read his book Cunning Folk last year, did a review of that on the channel, really really enjoyed it. Um, I also have his latest book All the Fiends of Hell to read soon. Um, this was the pick this month for my Patreon and uh, YouTube members book club. Um, so a group of us read it together and I think everyone really enjoyed it and I genuinely think this is an excellent book. Adam Neville as a horror writer has got that kind of slightly undefinable thing. He gets under your skin or he certainly gets under my skin. There's something really really creepy about his books that is enormously effective. So they managed to be you know intriguing and gripping and tense and all that stuff as well but there's also that weirdness to them there's there's something there that makes you feel like you're seeing stuff you're not supposed to see it reminds me of the the, the sense I used to have as a kid I almost had as a kid like before I really got into horror I was terrified by the idea of horror movies and I think maybe there was a bit of a fascination for me as a, as a result of that and I remember when I was kind of nine or ten knowing that there were kids I, I went to school with who'd seen horror movies and being really alarmed by that thought and being worried that I was going to end up seeing something that was going to you know disturb me and scar me and I think that experience as a kid is, is one of the things that has led me to as an adult want to try you know to, to read a lot of horror just to experience it to experience that thrill of being terrified of seeing things that you're you know you feel like you're not supposed to see um and then walk away and it's you know to survive that experience i think for me that's one of the things that makes reading horror and watching horror movies a almost like a life affirming experience is that you know you you experience the you know the worst possible terrors of the world and survive them um, and that's definitely an experience i felt i had with with this book um so let me tell you briefly what the plot is about. So it's about four male friends who all went to university together, who are now older, they're in kind of late 30s, I think, and they, they meet up every so often and like go away and like do a trip together. And this year they're going to uh, like they're kind of somewhere in Scandinavia, like the woods in Scandinavia, and doing like a kind of hang, a kind of camping hiking trip together. Um the book very much focuses on one of them, uh, one of the four, Luke, who feels like he's a bit of an outcast. So the others, you know, have successful jobs and things like that. Luke doesn't. And he feels like the others, you know, con are constantly judging him. So right from the start, there's kind of a tension there because of their, their kind of shared history and, and the, the slightly divergent paths their lives have taken. There's a tension between the four characters. And what Adam Neville does in this is take those four characters who've got that kind of inbuilt tension and then put them into a fantastically tense environment that amplifies all of the um, you know, kind of animosity between the characters. And it works really, really well. I love horror stories that, that take people out of civilization, take them people away from polite society and just, you know, like put them through terrifying situations to see what happens. Um, I think there's you, you can do really interesting stuff with characters if you're a skilled writer. Um, and Adam Neville definitely does this here. And a big power of this book, and, and indeed of the other book that I read by him, Cunning Folk, is the tension between the characters in the book. So you've got this stuff happening from the outside. Um, in this case, they are, you know, getting stalked through the forest by this, you know, this kind of unknown creature. Um, so you've got that going on. But then you've also got this additional layer of the tension between the characters, which works fantastically well. And Luke as a character really develops as the story progresses. He's a really, really interesting character. At the start of the book, you, you don't really know 
who the main character is going to be. And you know, reasonably quickly, you, you come to realise it's going to be Luke. But his character just grows and grows as the book continues. It becomes more and more interesting. He has a fantastic kind of story arc of, of his own, you know, outside of everything else that's going on. Um, and, and the book, I think, was, was all the better for that. Luke was a really identifiable character, a character that I could relate to in, in many ways. He he's, he's kind of full of neuroses and things like that, and that makes him a fascinating character to read. Um, so aside from the character work, the thing that Neville does just brilliantly in this is just build like a sense of the environment and, and of atmosphere. So this, this kind of weird forest that the characters find themselves in, where they get increasingly more and more lost, just feels deeply, deeply creepy. And in the final kind of third or so of the book, the book takes a, a significant change in direction, which I think in the hands of some writers could have could have scuppered it, but actually works really, really well. And it ends up being about a different kind of isolation. So I don't want to I don't want to spoil the book at all, but the first section of the book is about that kind of you know literal isolation of being in a, in a forest, away from civilization, away from like you know the health service and, and the police and things like that, unable to get hold of anyone else and just having to survive. The second part of the book has something slightly different going on but is just as tense. And it reminded me of kind of a mashup of two different styles of, of horror, both of which are about isolation, about being away from normality, but that inject, you know, use, use different techniques to inject the tension. And I, I guess the word I would use to describe a lot of this book, particularly that final part, is not so much like terror, but more just uncomfortableness. There's just some stuff in this book that is really, really uncomfortable. It made me, you know, my my skin crawl at times. And there are, um, there's a load of just there's just weird, creepy stuff going on that you get hints of through the book. And towards the end, you get more and more of these hints. And, and there's stuff where you almost feel like as you're reading it, you're glimpsing something out of the corner of your eye, which is a really effective technique for writing horror because rather than, rather than showing everything, Adam Neville just hints at stuff. And your mind fills in the gaps and makes makes something even even scarier um, than I think he could have, you know, on his own. So it's a it's a book that works with the reader and with the reader's own, um, you know, fears and neuroses to create something really really effective. So yeah, I, I really thought this was a very very effective book. I think Adam Neville does does great character work, builds tension really really well, but also uses uses the surroundings that that he puts his characters in to really build terror and tension. The one criticism I have of, of this book and of the other book I read by him as well, actually, is I, I find sometimes his writing is a little bit too ornate. It's not as, you know, I tend to prefer a kind of stripped down style of prose. And that's that's not true of Adam Neville. He, 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 he uses a lot of words, basically. I can't think of another way to describe it. He uses a lot of different words. Um, and they all work, they all make complete sense, but sometimes I felt like that was pulling me out of the story a tiny bit. But having said all of that, it's an incredibly effective book, and would it have been as effective if he had used a more stripped-down style of language? I don't know. Um, but if I was to level one criticism at his writing, it, it would be that. But overall, I really thought this was fantastic. Definitely recommend his stuff, and I'm really looking forward to reading more by him. So I hope you found that interesting. Do let me know in the comments if you've read any Adam Neville books, if there's any you recommend to me. And as always, thanks very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.